Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. pray. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name, for you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and thou hast prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all the day. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I cry out. I shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, Terror is on every side. Denounce him. Let us denounce him, say all my familiar friends, watching for my fall. Perhaps he will be deceived. Then we can overcome him, and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore my persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome me. They will be greatly shamed for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, who tries the righteous, who sees the heart and the mind, let me see thy vengeance upon them, for to thee have I committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of the evildoers. The Word of the Lord. Psalm 69, verses 8 through 11 and 18 through 20. You are invited to read along with us, either responsively by half verse or in unison. Surely for your sake have I suffered reproach. And shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred. An alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting. But that was turned to my reproach. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. 
Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies, deliver me. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. What then are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The Word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve apostles, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. 
For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. In this gospel, we hear once again what God brings to us as message all throughout history. Anytime God's people are facing hardship or challenge or being called forth to speak God's word to power, to oppression, who are being asked to bear something new and unknown, fear not, Mary for God has seen you. Do not be afraid, Moses, as you take this word to Pharaoh. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. We hear that message again in the middle of this passage that bears frightening news. The path you have chosen in following me, Jesus says, is going to be hard. It's going to pit you against the powers of this world and the structures of this world in ways that could bring about your death even. But do not be afraid of those who could kill your body. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to take the message that you have heard whispered to you in the dark that you almost dare not believe and proclaim it from the rooftops, shout it in the streets. We are all one in Christ. Do not be afraid to shout to all that as children of God you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Do not be afraid, for there may be the structures of the society that will fight back. For most of us who are white, the places we will run strongest into the opposition is within our own families. But do not be afraid. What you have heard from the heart of God is the way that you Proclaim God's love. To deny that love of God poured out for every single human is to deny that Lord. To deny that God's love breaks in wherever power dominates is to deny the Lord who went to the cross rather than to use power to dominate. We are at such a crossroads where it is so easy to just continue to close our eyes and to say, well, I don't particularly see it, so it must not be true. Listen to the whispers in the dark. Listen to the voices that are raised around us. Listen deeply to the ways, the ways that we as white people have not heard, have been blind to, the pieces of the structures of our society that have been built over generations and that we just take for granted, that deny a Lord of justice, a Lord of love, a Lord of hope, a Lord of freedom. Systems that have been put into place that make it so much harder 
for some people to receive a loan than others, to be approved for housing, to find a job, to be seen as beautiful. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. Do we hear that whispered by God in the dark to each one of God's children? And are we bold enough? Can we put aside our fear? Can we quit denying our Lord who pours out everything Let's go of every privilege he has in order to come to us, to be one of us, to love us all the way to losing all for us on the cross. And if we have died with him, we shall surely more so live with him. For only in that, in not denying our Lord, but embracing, proclaiming, following will we find true life so do not be afraid there is much to be done and much to be proclaimed god goes with us our lord goes before us amen Let us pray. O oh God, our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble, in this challenging and uncertain time of global pandemic and public health crisis, and as our eyes become ever more open to the reality of racial injustice in this world, we come before you offering our prayers on behalf of those in need, the church, and the world. For the church, that it may not grow weary of proclaiming the gospel of Christ and serve as a beacon of hope to a suffering world. Grant that our local churches and communities of faith may reflect your love as we minister to the most vulnerable among us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit as we work to be your healing hands and feet to all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are affected by coronavirus around the world, for the leaders of the nations, that they may work together for the common good as the outbreak spreads. For health care workers who, with hearts of service, stand on the front lines of providing care, grant them courage and protection as they put the needs of public safety before their own. For scientists and researchers around the world, as they combat the virus, that their work may yield knowledge to develop a vaccine, treatments, and improved measures to reduce its spread. For those who have been so heavily hurt by the economic impact as we strive to slow the spread of this virus, may they find resources and courage to face the challenge. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are affected by the racism which infects our nation, may barriers that divide be brought down, that bonds of trust may be strengthened to benefit the entire human family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks, Creator God, for the fathers in our lives. Fatherhood does not come with a manual, and reality teaches us that some fathers excel 
while others fail. We ask your blessings for them all and forgiveness where it is needed. This Father's Day, we remember the many sacrifices fathers make for their children and families and the ways, both big and small, they lift children to achieve dreams thought beyond reach. And we give our thanks to all who celebrate other days this week. For those who celebrate birthdays, especially Tekla, Ed, and Fran. And with those who celebrate anniversaries, especially Kempton and Gina, and Charlie and Susan. We invite you to name your own thanksgivings at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are sick with the virus, may they have access to medical care and regain their strength and health. Grant them your healing grace. We pray for all who face physical or mental illnesses of any kind and ask for strength to all who are caring for loved ones. We pray for those who have asked us to name them in our prayers. Craig, Jim, Philip, Linda, Donna, Tom, Butch, Christina, Jim, Bruce, and Bud. You are invited to name those for whom you pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have already lost loved ones to the virus and those who will yet suffer such loss, that they may know the consolation of your love. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints, they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray especially for Bill Berry and Denise Greer. You are invited to name those who have died. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice, in your wisdom you create all people in your image without exception. Through your goodness, Open our eyes to see the dignity, beauty, and worth of every human being. Open our minds to understand that all your children are brothers and sisters in the same human family. Open our hearts to repent of racist attitudes, behaviors, and speech which demean others. Open our ears to hear the cries of those wounded by racial discrimination and their passionate appeals for change. Strengthen our resolve to make amends for past injustices and to right the wrongs of history. And fill us with courage that we might seek to heal wounds, build bridges, forgive and be forgiven, and establish peace and equality for all in our communities. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you.